Oh, and the buns. Don't forget the bunnies. Don't forget the bunnies. Here, hello. Hey, Carrie. Hello. Just going to do a quick live rather than upload a video because our telephone landline is down again for about the tenth time in uh, three weeks which is getting really annoying so willow darling you're a bit close so as i can't upload any videos until bt or british telecom as they used to be known as fixes the phone line properly i thought i'll do a quick live about the making hay but you know me being me i kind of went live before i'm in the field i really need to be in to talk about the hay hey siobhan so, oh, Siobhan, look at this. Look at Curly's footsies. And Willow. Willow was trotting today. Hi. Oh, you're going to trot off again. She's trotting without even being asked at the moment. Look at that walk. So, yeah, had their feet done. It's like a miracle. So, we're just going to go in the hayfield while I've got a bit of light. Hey, Cathy. Thank you very much. This is Curly and... Uh, Willow, Willow's the one who was badly injured in January that uh, the vet thought wouldn't live but she's currently actually, oh she's just trotting behind me, you didn't get to see it, sorry um, she's actually a bit of a medical mystery at the moment um, she's got a lump on her shoulder that's formed oh there's Bonnie, that's the new girl that's the one that uh, Siobhan, who's just commented on here brought up to me, one of the two Hi, buddy. Yeah, I have a lot of medical mysteries. Um, and uh, the vet down south has actually asked for the x rays and if I can show them scans. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yay, Bon Bon and Panther, they're quite good friends. Together quite a lot. So I'm just going to walk into this field. Um, I'll get through another gate. I am sorry. I should really. Long haired sheep. Oh, that's Bantha. The crazy one that I bought uh, middle of May at the rare breed sale. She's nuts. I adore her. She's a very sweet little thing, actually. But sorry, I'm trying to untie a gate. Yeah, the Bantha. Get extra brownie points if you know what a Bantha is. She's named after a banther because she kind of looks like one. Mad, crazy thing. So, I've just got to... Uh... Kathy, how's... Uh, has Bob left your place now? Yes, from Star Wars, but I mean the actual, you know, the banther thing. <laughs> if you know what the banther thing is, you get extra brownie points. So, here we go. Well, this bit, obviously, is not making hay. Now I want to talk about this because I watched a farmer today talking about making haylage and um, what works for him. Let me just see if I can get a flash working on here. Uh, let me see do that. There we go. Sorry, I know it's getting a little bit dark. Left about now. They actually have a fixed home. I thought they'd just travel around the world having a fantastic time helping people so anyway this is one particular type of grass i'm useless at knowing the names of grass Siobhan will probably know this one we have several different types of grass here now when you're looking at making silage which is what is generally fermented and fed to cows what you're looking for is not a big long stem like this so this particular type of grass, you would not want to be feeding cows. And to have silage, you really need sort of three lots of leaves. Now this has only had one lot, it's not even there anymore. But it's only had one lot of leaves. So if I get this one here, but this is a particularly bad type of grass for cows. So you'd be looking, hi Brenda, you'd be looking for three leaves. So this grass has three leaves. It's the same type of grass I just picked up. Sorry, I need the flash because it's getting dark. 
So if you're cutting for silage, you'd say, yay, we've got three leaves. But three leaves of this type of grass means it's crap for cows because there's so much stem. It's a lot of stem and not much foliage, not much from the grass. So you wouldn't want this particular type of grass for cows. And a lot of people would say, well, if you won't make, use it for silage, yeah, it's from corn, that's quite interesting. Um, let me see if I can actually show how long this stuff is. Oh, and then I will explain to you why. You see how long it is? It's much bigger, taller than wide. It's quite long, quite long grass. There you go, I sit up, comes up to my shoulder. Sorry, I just missed that. Hey, Karen, nice to see you again. Um, what you get from corn, we call uh, straw. But yeah, I see what you mean. You can, um, you can sort of ferment it as they do for silage. So anyway, you see how long the grass is. It's really, really quite long. Now, a lot of people wouldn't like this for hay because as I said, there's not a lot of um, foliage to it. I mean, this is, this is a different type of grass from the one I just showed you. My flash has gone off. There we go. That's a different type of grass to this one that I just showed you, you see? Siobhan, if you're still there, you must know the names of these grasses. I don't. I'm useless. <laughs> you know, Brenda, everyone's the same here. People have been cutting grass and then it's been raining. So it's just sat out in the fields. And then we have a third type of grass. And this here is an OB. See how long the grass is. So this is a third type of grass. And this one is really, really soft. So I can find those two specimens I just threw down onto the floor, into the grass. One, two, three. There you go, three different types of grass. Whoops. There, you see that? A lot of people don't realize there are so much, there are so many different types of grass. This is just three that I've just picked at random in this field, just because I'm sat here and they were all within arm's length. Now this field is, has probably been kept for horses for some, for, well, at least two years before we got it. I know that for a fact. They had horses on here. Oh, it's disappeared. That's how long it is. And, um, you know, they have receded it. And when you've got horses, you do also, I suppose really for cows, but for horses, when you come to hay, you also ideally want a lot of clover. Now, clover's really, really good for horses, especially white clover. Um, it gives them extra energy and that way you can feed less in terms of bulk but get more out of it because of the extra energy from the clover. There you are! Am I being eaten alive from bugs? No. Uh, Kathy, the grass tends to grow natural here but I, I can't take you down to field tonight because it's all the way over there but I will do a live another night, I promise, when it's a little bit lighter. Um, showing... The, the purposes of, you know, sort of putting um, your own grass in, sowing grass, overseeing and the like. Hey, Mary Beth. Um, Heather, I'm wearing long sleeves. That's what I was going to show you and tell you. So anyway, in this field, for my particular horses, I don't actually want lots of leaf. So there's lots of leaf. Now, the reason I specifically don't want lots of leaf, you've just fallen over, you nana is because I have Welsh ponies and Welsh ponies are what they call good doers. Um, you imagine somebody like me, Scotland's beautiful, isn't it, Heather? Imagine somebody like me, I'm overweight. Now I actually have confirmation from my doctor um, on what, the 13th of June. She said to me, Cheryl, tests show your metabolism is slower than average, than a normal person. Now I cannot tell you how happy that made me to know that I can actually say, look, I've got a thyroid problem, I've got um, a folic acid problem, I've got fibromyalgia. On top of that, the doctor has confirmed test show, I actually do have a slower metabolism than I should. So 
makes me really, really happy. Um, but it means that I could, I can live off less food. I get more energy from less food. I take on more calories than most people. I don't burn as many calories. Now, in that respect, Welsh ponies are the same. Um, they put on weight just looking at grass. Um, they don't need high energy. And if I was looking at high energy, um, you know, food to really, really make them bulk up, I would be wanting the sort of grass that you cut for silage. So lots and lots of foliage. But because I have Welshies really, really as what they call good doers, I don't want that. I actually want this nice, long, leggy, stemmy grass. Um, and under all of that, as I said, you know, I, I, Obi, you're not a horse. Stop eating the grass. He's an idiot. He sits with horses and eats hay and grass now. Um, so I've got all the clover in here, which is all low down. That will give my horses all the energy that they need in the hay. But to be honest, these thin stalks, the stalky bits, will also give my horses everything they need because they don't need a lot of nutrition. They need bulk to keep their gut working. Uh, and I don't know if you know, but horses, um, they're not ruminants. They're not like cows and sheep. You know, they don't have extra processing. They only have one stomach. And a horse's stomach doesn't stretch. A human stomach stretches. Yeah, Obi's insane. He'll eat grass all day long. Not because he feels sick, but because whoever he's with is eating it. Um, so, yeah, horses actually have um, a non-stretchy stomach. And humans are stomach stretches. Which is why, I mean, your stomach is only supposed to be about the size of your fist. And yet you know, we all know, that we can eat a hell of a lot more than that. And that's because our stomachs stretch, but horses don't. A horse can only process the amount of calories. Oh, bye birdie. Um, it can only process enough food that's going through the non-stretchy stomach and then, you know, it doesn't store it for later, which is why a horse has to keep eating all the time. But horses also have this thing called, um, <laughs> horses also have this thing called uh, a cecum. And the cecum is like internal central heating. And what that does is it heats the horse up. And the way it heats the horse up is long fibre. And when long fibre gets into the cecum, which is part of the sort of, it's sort of technically off the side of the digestive system, but is part of it. Um, what are you doing, dog? Um, when food goes into the cecum, long fibre, such as this, it heats the horse up. It's, it's literally internal central heating. So, in winter, horses, <laughs> Welsh ponies, horses that are like mine, that can live off fresh air, which are the, what they call the native ponies to the UK. So, up here in Scotland, you've got the Ersky pony, um, you've got the Shetland pony, so, because of that also, the miniature Shetland ponies, you've got the Highland ponies, and Welsh ponies and, and cobs, they also are sort of a very, very similar constitution when it comes to what they're made of. And so they, like all the Highlands, and then you also look at the, the Dartmoors, the Exmoor ponies, um, the Dales pony, the Irish ponies, such as the Connemara. <laughs> I don't get bored of it yet, Brenda. Um, Connemara and the Kerry Bog Pony, they can all live off really, really low calorie food, um, and they do. So that's why I'm quite happy that I have this grass, which is all stem, not a lot of leaf, because as long as a horse is eating, the cecum warms the horse up from the inside. And if you see a horse shivering, it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs a coat on or a rug, as we call them, a blanket, as they call them in America. It doesn't mean that they need something on to cover them, to keep them warm like we do. If you feed a horse, it will naturally warm up from the inside, which is better for the horse. So what are you up to, Obi? So in this bit, this is this is nice, lovely long grass. So I'm not cutting for silage. If I was cutting for cows, silage for cows, I would be absolutely devastated at this stuff you know I, I would just say this this is rubbish no good 
not going to do any favours. Um, but for Welsh ponies or native horses, also the Clydesdale uh, and the Shire, they also, and the Suffolk Punch, they are also classed as native. Bizarrely, actually, so is the Percheron. That's a bat, by the way. I don't know if you just saw it. Um, they're all classed as native, sorry, not native ponies. The Shire's not a pony, it's a horse. But they're native horses and ponies, and they can live off far less than you would expect. So, you know, I mean, at the moment, Willow needs to put some weight on. But I don't want to put too much on her because of her shoulder. And that's why I've allowed her to stay what they call a little bit lean. But she's just done another growth spurt. She's now standing about 14 one hands high, which is fantastic. Um, she's two and a half, so that's really, really good for her age. Uh, what about the goats? Oh, goats live off fresh air. Goats are happier with uh, weeds and brush. They don't generally... They only eat grass if they have nothing else to eat, actually. Goats are quite weird like that. They can live off grass, but it's not the best thing for them. So, yes, this stuff is better for the goats as well. Because there's less energy. Uh, that, guys looking at it i can see the shape of it from here uh that is a lorry either going uh, yep that's going to a distillery which means it's going to pick up a lorry load of whiskey and the whiskey will go in that lorry or truck and then that will then be delivered somewhere else to a bottling plant so yeah i look at those sometimes and think stop i want a drink i've got whiskey in the house don't worry so anyway, yeah, look at that. Beautiful even when it's cloudy and going dark. So that's a little bit of talking about grass for tonight. I know that Mr. Tom Pemberton, his dad, the ginger warrior, would, were farmers in Lincolnshire, they'd, they'd look at this and go, oh, that's useless. It's no good for cows. You like lorry better than truck. Excellent. <laughs> I do too. Um, though we do have truck stops over here which of course you don't call them lorry stops you call them truck stops which is quite funny and trucker cafes your trucker cafes not lorry driver cafes so anyway that is today's lesson on this particular field of grass now i have several different fields that look different because they're all growing different grass so what i will try and do is tomorrow get out to another field hopefully when it's a little bit later we do an OB. I just picked up a piece of grass. Would you like it? Yeah. Okay. There you go. So yeah, there you go. It's a little bit of information about grass that you probably never knew that you needed to know. You probably don't need to know really, but it's just another bit of information. And if I put the flash on, you'll see down here. <laughs> what are you doing, you nutter? He just where the light was. Are you playing with the grass? Are you playing with the grass over me? He's insane, this dog. He's so funny. Um, you're welcome. So I'll try and do another one. Again, case in point. No foliage. First bit of foliage, first leaf. All the way up and down. Not for cows. Not for silage. Definitely for Welsh ponies. You never know, I'll probably have Tom now say, no, you're wrong, it's good for cows. I don't know. Um, also here we have this pineapple weed. So, I love that, it smells like pineapple. I will make some use of it one day. But anyway, Curly and Willow had their feet done yesterday, so we gave them the night to us, because they hadn't had done for a while. And now they're back outside. That is my view for the evening. Thank you everybody for joining me. And uh, yeah, that hay is fine for things that can live off practically nothing. And when we do cut the hay, excuse me, I will be doing some videos. Oh. Do I ever put my good whiskey water to work? <laughs> yes, it flushes my toilet every day. <laughs> of course it works. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. <sighs> Prairie grass. I have no idea what prairie grass is. I need to look that up. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, pineapple weed makes tea. What's what's the tea good for? 
I've actually been having a really bad day. I woke up this morning and I felt like I've been hit by a truck. It feels like every one of my ribs and my hips um, is broken. And it's just a fibromyalgia thing. But that's why it's taken until 10 o'clock at night for me to actually get up and do anything. Um, headaches, upset stomach and cramps. Good to know. Thank you very much. Screenshot that. Hopefully I remember what it's for. Okay everybody, I am just going to Panama. Oh, help me sleep. Disable the flash. There we go. Okay everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I hope some of it was interesting. That noise you can hear is the Soa's complaining. And uh, I will see you all soon. Good night everybody, have a lovely time. Hope you all feel great and if you don't, go back to bed and make sure you feel better in the morning.